Let's kick off with Boomer and Valenti. All right. We're going to get to the picks in a minute. I will just tell you the headline in week one, mistakes were made. Um, I just want to give you a, a quick note on overreactions, Boomer. I pulled a stat just for you. Week one, since the start of 2014, teams that lose by double digits have covered the number in week two 63% of the time. Now, why did you pick 2014? Why don't you go back to 2010? Well, I don't know. It's about 10 years, and it's what the st- – hey, the stat fit. What do you <laughs> okay. want from me? Um, I'm just wondering, maybe the five years before that, that wasn't the case. Maybe they probably. Were to see All right, here. And, okay, whatever. Here. You want a 2010 stat? Yes. I you. Since 2010, teams that won their opener by double digits have only covered 40%. In week two. All right. Oh, by the way, as a former player, yes, uh, it makes sense to me because as a former player, the last team that I wanted to play the week after we just played was a team that got housed, especially one right. at home, meaning like I would hate to play the Giants this week. Well, as as your partner Geo puts it, it's a butcher block spot. <laughs> yeah, it is a butcher block spot, especially if you are the Cardinals. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's get to the picks. Picks of the week. All right, Booms, let's start it out. We talked about Justin Fields a little bit. Bucks laying two and a half, hosting the Chicago Bears. What right, do you got? Home, well, a home dog, I, I know, I, I recognize uh, how difficult this is. Uh, huh. I, I just think that Justin Fields is not ready. Baker Mayfield could throw a few picks here. Um, but I do think that the Bucks defense is going to give the Bears offense fits. Um, I know there's a lot of pressure there. I know this is another home game. Justin's probably going to get booed. I'm sure, uh, you know, Eberflus is going to get booed. I'm, I'm going to take the Bucks here, and I'll lay the two and a half. Yeah, for me, the Bucks want to throw it, and the Bears' secondary's got awful. I'll lay the two and a half. Bucks. All right, game two. Very difficult here. Atlanta at home, laying two, welcoming in the Green Bay Packers. All right, so how happy are the Green Bay Packers to see Jordan Love do what he did last week against the Bears? He was seamless. He looked like he had been there, you know, and playing for the last three years as opposed to sitting and watching. And he certainly, I think, opened a lot of eyes. Uh, the one thing about the Falcons, they have speed on offense. This Bijan Robinson is remarkable. I don't know if you saw a couple of his moves. He's Barry oh, yeah. Sanders-esque. How about that cut in the flat? Yes. Body momentum going out of bounds. Stops on a dime right. and takes it upfield. Yeah, but I'm going to go with the Packers here on the road. And I, the reason I, I'm doing this is because I think their defense is underrated. Uh, Desmond Ritter has not thrown a pick. Uh, I know that since last year. So uh, maybe they get a pick or two here. But I, I think it's a, a, a relatively close scoring game. But I'm going to stick with Jordan Love and the Packers. I almost used a veto here. Pack, pack struggles stopping the run. I get scared against Arthur Smith, but man, watching Ritter last week, holy hell! I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I'll go Packers. Houston, home opener, laying one and a half, taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Two rookie quarterbacks, man, and both of them looked okay last week. I didn't think they were great, and I no. think that um, Trevor Lawrence uh, basically gave uh, Anthony Richardson a little bit of advice on get down, don't take the hits. Out of the athletes on, you know, that play that position, I think Anthony Richardson is more likely to do something spectacular in this game to win the game. So I'm going to go with the Colts, uh, and I'll take the points. I'm on the other side. Uh, boom, I didn't mind Houston's defense, and I and I have a lot of respect for D'Amico Ryans. I, I'm going to go Houston here at home. I think the line just indicates there's a little bit of confidence here. I'll go with it, Texans, but tepid at best. All right, Lions laying four and a half, hosting. Whatever that was, the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> My God. All right, so, you know, the Lions, America's team, as you've been pointing out, you're up there in Detroit. Uh, everybody loves Dan Campbell. Everybody loves uh, what this defense looks like. I love the effort that they gave against the Chiefs, and I think that effort's going to continue. You know when Dan Campbell said, all these expectations are like wind beneath my wings? <laughs> and he's, uh, he's basically quoting Bette Midler. I love that. So I'm going to take the Lions, and I'll lay the points. Yeah, you're not going to have left tackle Taylor Decker this week. They're going to flip Panay Sewell over, but Seattle is signing people off the street to play tackle. Uh, plus, you're probably going to see in upwards of 10,000 ski masks in the crowd, Boomer. I don't know if you caught C.J. Gardner-Johnson with that reset. Yes. It's going to be a madhouse. Lions laid a four and a half. Chargers on the road as favorites. 
God, I hate Brandon Staley. Laying three at the Titans. Who do you hate more, Brandon Staley or Ryan Tannehill who likes to throw interceptions? Staley. Ah, wow. <laughs> Staley. I, but I talk about a pressure point spot, and I talk about a team that has legitimate Super Bowl uh, aspirations, even though their defense didn't show that last week. They will not see that kind of offense coming from the Titans, although they will try to get run on. Uh, by Derrick Henry. I'm going to take uh, the Chargers on the road, and I'll lay the three points. If I had to pick it, which I don't, I'm going to use a veto here, it would be Vrabel as a home dog. But I'm with you. Tannehill was so bad, I, I couldn't possibly. Uh, by the way, did Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa play last week? What no, which, was is, that? Which, which is amazing to me that they spent that much money on their yep. edge rushers, and neither one of them legitimately showed up in that game against Miami. That just goes to show you. How no Teron Armstead. Yes. No Armstead. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I may have bet the Chargers <laughs> last week. All right. Bengals minus three hosting the Ravens. I'm going to take the Ravens. Uh, and the reason I'm going to take the Ravens is even though the Bengals got blown out last week, the Bengals have this habit of starting the season slow. Uh, Joe Burrow had a terrible game last week. Their offensive line got steamrolled like the Giants offensive line got steamrolled. Um, I still – I'm thinking that the Bengals are going to win this division, but it's going to happen later on in the season. I'm the, drawing a line through last week. Okay. Weather, Joe Burrow ice cold. They were going against my Brownies. I got to go Bengals here. I have to. Right, well, I'm, ta- I'm taking I'm going I'm to take the Ravens just because John scared Harbaugh. scared me. John Harbaugh gives them fits. I know. You've scared me, though. You don't pick against your Bengals. I know. And a home opener back against the wall? Yes. Who are you? Bills laying eight and a half hosting the Raiders. This is horrific, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not taking this game. I'm vetoing this game. You're smart. You're a smart and elegant man. Uh, I am, I'm vetoing. I want no part of this. I can't trust Josh Allen covering a big number. And the, Ra- the Raiders? Re- across no the way. country? No, no way. way. Niners, seven and a half at the Rams, but we know they don't have any fans, so it's a de facto home game. That's right. Niners laying seven and a half. Yeah, I like the Niners. I'll, I'll lay the seven and a half. I know it's a big number. I know it's a division game, and I know the Rams are one and all, and they surprised the hell out of everybody last week with their victory at Seattle. But the Niners didn't shock anybody. Uh, Nick Bosa, that defense was assaulting Kenny Pickett last week. They overran the offensive linemen of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you know what? Brock Purdy looked like he had never been hurt. It looked like he stepped right back in there just like he did last year when he was healthy. And I think this team is going to be the team that's going to meet Philadelphia in the NFC Championship game. So I am laying the seven, seven and a half, and I'm going to go with the 49ers. It's difficult for me. I, I hate big spreads. I just have such a problem, Boomer. How are the Rams going to protect Stafford? You know, Seattle doesn't have difference makers up front. So I – I'm with you, but this violates everything I believe in. I'll lay the seven and a half. I'll take the Niners. God help us. Yes. Giants. Giants minus four and a half. They travel to the desert. I don't think they've won in Arizona since Rodney Hampton played. But here we go. What do you got for me? I remember beating the Giants in Arizona as a Cardinal quarterback. Um, <laughs> you know what? This, this is a butcher block spot. I think this is uh, the Brian Dayball. I'm going to coach my ass off, and I'm going to get this team right. Um, I know they're going against uh, Gannon, the head coach of the uh, Arizona Cardinals, was the former defense coordinator of the Eagles, so he knows the Giants. He knows how to stop the Giants. Maybe there's a little struggle there. I don't see this as a high-scoring game, but I could see the Giants winning like 24-17, to 23-17, to 17, something like that. So I'll take the Giants, and I'll lay the points. How about 24-20? I, I cannot trust this football team to cover any number right now. And look, Boomer, here's the other thing. I never understood in the offseason how the, the wisdom, if you will, of taking your best corner and putting him at the slot with a Dory Jackson who's never done that in his career and starting a pair of rookie corners. I I just have problems. But, you have, t- but you have you have Romeo Do- um, Romeo Dobbs. You have Do- Joshua Dobbs playing quarterback I know. for for the uh, Cardinals. Then I just- why is the number four and a half? Why isn't it seven and a half? Something weird here. The ghosts of Rodney Hampton. Give me the four. <laughs> I'll take the four and a half. I'll take the Cardinals. Okay. If they lose this game, you're hosting the show alone next I week. I got you. I, I'll need a mental break. Cowboys laying eight and a half hosting the Jets. You can't tell me to take the Jets here. You I, I'm can't. D- I, you know what? I am. You, it's eight and a half here now. I, I saw a nine and a half. So should I go with the eight and a half or do I go with the nine and a half? Take the nine and a half. I don't care. All right. I'll take the nine know. and a half with the Jets. 
The Jets' defense is real, just like the Cowboys' defense is real. I, I think this game will be close. I, I don't think Zach Wilson's going to have a great game by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't, there's not going to be another Boomer. blowout. I just, Boomer. you know, so many things happened in that giant game that the Cowboys were able to basically steamroll momentum on them. I, I don't think that's going to happen against this Jet defense. I don't know if Zach Wilson makes it through the game. Oh, boy. I'll, I'll take the Cowboys. Okay. Denver Commanders. You ready? I don't care. Denver laying three and a half. What do you do here? I'm not Denver doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I'm not. I'm. I'm. This is my second veto. Give me Denver. Dolphins laying three, traveling to New England. You know what to do here. Don't disappoint me. I'm not going to disappoint you. You want me to take the home dog is what you want me to do. That is correct. And that's what I'm going to do. That is correct. Thank Listen, you. Listen, it's an overreaction. All right, Dolphins were wonderful. But their defense stinks. New England has a power running game. I think they may have found something with, with Kendrick Bourne. And it's it's New England in that must-win spot. I, I'm, I'm taking New England here. I got to tell you something. The one thing that I took out of that game last week, Bill O'Brien has had a major impact already. I love yeah. their passing game. I love their bunch formations. I love the confusions. The confusion that they that they gave to the Eagles, I think that the Dolphins will struggle with that as well. The only thing is... Mm. is that the Dolphins are one of the faster teams in the league, and New England is one of the slower teams in the league. No, it, it, it's very fair. I just I got a hard time. Now all of a sudden the Dolphins are willy-nilly just laying points on the road. I can't. I can't. This, all right, this game's brutally difficult. Saints favored by three at Carolina. You know, uh, so they, they squeaked one by last week, Derek Carr. And if Mickey Loomis, the GM of the Saints this week, said, we saw things on the field that we haven't seen around here since Drew Brees has left, Many, meaning that they were very happy with Derek Carr's performance. A lot of yards, not a lot of points. Uh, they did win the game, and that's all that matters. They're 1-0. They have the better team. They have the better defense. And I think that this defense will give Bryce Young uh, some problems. You know, Bryce wasn't bad last week. He, C.J. Stroud, and Anthony Richardson, like I said before, there were moments in these games where they played and they made throws. You're like, okay, they belong here. And yeah. then there were all of a sudden mistakes started happening, and that's normal for a rookie quarterback. And I think that's going to be the struggle in this game. I thought he played well. He made two – I'll give Bates credit. Bates is an all-world safety. Bryce made two mistakes, but outside of that, he was clearly – the better quarterback last week. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a free roll with the Panthers at home. Give me the three. And that brings us to the impossible right here. I'm going to do something so stupid I deserve to lose. Browns laying two and a half on the road. Mike Tomlin is a home divisional dog. It should be illegal to pick against them, but I'm doing it. I'm taking the Browns. Well, didn't we pick Pittsburgh last week? I know I did. I think I had San Francisco. You did. Okay. so I didn't. I, my pick stunk last week. Forgive me. And I'm just telling you that uh, Miles Garrett is just unbelievable. He it's is terrifying. ridiculous. As big as he is and as athletic as he is and as quick as he is, he basically wrecks the game for the opposing team, and that's exactly what he did last week. The, the Bengals had no answer for their defensive line. Uh, I'm still not sold on Deshaun Watson, and I want to see him dealing with this T.J. Watt-led defense that got shredded by – uh, of course, uh, San Francisco last week, but TJ did have three sacks. I'm going to take Mike Tomlin as a home yep. dog here in this game. I respect it. I, I just, look, I like what the Browns were able to do. And you're right, Deshaun has to be better. But I'm also, as I said earlier when we were talking about the, the Bengals, I'm kind of drawing a line for both quarterbacks. The weather was horrible. It was week one. I really believe in this Browns team. And look, credit to you. You brought up the Jim Schwartz thing. I think it's a massive upgrade for them defensively. 